Let's show you guys how to make a zoom roll transition. All right, taking a look at this, it seems pretty seamless. All I'm doing is zooming in and rolling the camera a tiny bit and adding a little bit of motion blur. So I have these two clips in my timeline and I just want to seamlessly transition between them. So typically I'll go to the center of the clip where it cuts and then I'll hold shift on my keyboard and the left arrow key twice. That will jump me 10 frames, which is five frames each time you press that arrow key while holding shift. I'm gonna press C on my keyboard and make a cut there. Go back to the center by using the down arrow and then shift right arrow twice, one, two. That'll jump me 10 frames out in that direction. Now I have this transition point. I typically like to cut my clip so I know where my transition's happening. All we have to do is go to the effects tab and type in transform and drag on the transform effect to our first video. What I typically like to do is minimize everything else and just see the transform. But you can see I'm constrained to just this clip. So what I like doing is clicking these three lines up here and deselect pin to clip. Doing that will allow us to see everything before and after our actual cut down clip. And you can resize that using this bar down here. So what I typically like to do first is add a position, a scale, and a rotation keyframe. I'm gonna highlight those and drag those to the very beginning of our clip. You can see it's denoted by the different gray colors right here. I typically like to go somewhere towards the end, not all the way at the end, because if you click on the end, then it gets a little funky. So we're gonna move all those later. Somewhere towards the end, I'm gonna change the rotation to let's say negative 15, because I wanna rotate to the right, and then I'm gonna change my scale to 150%. And now I'm gonna simply adjust my position so I'm up on the character that I wanna transition into, just like that and then playing back through that, make sure we have no black bars, it looks great. And then all I wanna do is highlight these keyframes and move them out towards the end. So now I know that it's beginning and the ending of the clip. And if you play that back, you'll see that all we have created is this little rotation effect. Now is where the fun part happens. Let's highlight all of our first keyframes, go to right click, temporal interpolation, ease out, and we're not gonna do anything with the ending keyframes. All we want to do is drop down on the position, click our keyframe, and drag that all the way out to the right. And we're going to drag this to the right a little bit as well. Do the same thing for scale. Drag that out to the right and try to keep it in the dead center because it moves up and down. Hopefully Premiere updates that sometime. And then drag that out to the right as well. Same thing for rotation. Click and drag that out to the right and click on this one and drag that out to the right. What that does is it allows us to create a, almost like a little ramp into this effect. So as you can see our first batch, it's not really doing much and then it accelerates all the way towards that transition point. But you may be wondering, we don't have any motion blur going on right here. So what I want to do is actually scroll down and uncheck use composition shutter angle. You can change this from anywhere from zero to 360. So let's just do 200 and you'll immediately see we have some motion blur right here. Now playing that back, it looks like this. Nice little seamless zoom in, and now we have to do the second batch. Real quick, I just wanted to jump in here and say if you guys aren't using vidIQ for your YouTube channel, you totally should. It helps boost your channel and optimize all of your videos. So if you're interested, click the link down in the description below and you can get access to vidIQ. So again, click on our second clip, drag our transform effect, and let's resize this a little bit so we can see everything. And we wanna actually start a little bit scaled in. In this case, I don't wanna actually go all the way to 150% on the scale because I'm already zoomed in pretty much. So I'm gonna actually zoom in and then zoom out. Toggle the keyframe animation at 125. Toggle the position in case we need it and then rotation as well. And since we are actually rotating to the right, I kinda of have to use my brain a little bit and figure out which way I wanna rotate. So if I'm at positive and I'm going to negative, it will give us that same rotation. So in this case, I'm just gonna do, you know, 7% on the rotation because I don't think I can do more than that because I'll start to get black lines down here. So let's just do seven and then everything's set right there. Let's highlight these, bring them back to the beginning and let's go somewhere towards the end and then just click this reset parameter button on all those keyframes. And then we can drag that out to the end as well. Right click on those. Temporal interpolation, ease in, because we're gonna ease into this, and let's do the same thing that we did before. Position, we didn't really change at all, so we don't need to adjust that, but under scale, let's click this and drag this all the way out, and drag that to the left a little bit, so it ramps in. And then under rotation, let's click this button, drag that out to the left, keeping it in the center, and drag that to the left as well. So now we have this clip where it rotates in, but we don't have any motion blur right here, so all we have to do is scroll down, clicking on our second clip, 
uncheck use composition shutter angle and change that to 200 as well. So now if we play through this, you'll see that we've kind of created that little seamless transition and that looks like this. So just play around with it because you can get crafty with the transform effect within Premiere Pro and let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. As always, hit that like button and subscribe because I'm going to be making some more stuff in the future. I'll see you guys next time.